All right, guys, winter screamers time. What does that mean, winter screamers? If you haven't caught a recent video, we discussed calling fragrances screamers. Well, today I've got fragrances that are screamers and perfect for winter. Beast mode, very intense, very long lasting with massive cloud and projection and sillage. If you're curious to learn about them in this ranked list, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Winter's around the corner and I've got my winter list for you today. This is uh, mostly a niche list. In fact, it's all niche actually, come to think of it. Uh, maybe one or two might be kind of sort of in the designer category, but every single thing here should be niche. And they're very long lasting, intense fragrances. They're definitely screamers, meaning they'll project and they have massive cloud, sillage and things like that and last a long time. Before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel, and you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. If you have a favorite winter screamer fragrance, put a comment down and let me know what it is so I can find out. But we're gonna go ahead and get started with the first one. Um, before I get to the fragrances though, I should say this is ranked in um, what, how I'm feeling right now. So basically these are my favorite fragrances. I had some factors in where I thought, okay, that one doesn't last as long as that one. So those kind of came in as factors as well. But mostly it's ranked in a way that I really enjoy the fragrance at number one in comparison to number 20. But then again, we're starting off at number 20 with this kind of minimalistic fragrance, but it's super beast mode. It's a screamer. It's Thomas Cosmala's number four, Après l'Amour. I don't know if you guys know this one. Uh, many of you have told me this is really intense and really long lasting for you guys. It is, it's really intense. It's a big cloud. Uh, it kind of chokes you sometimes. That's how strong it is. Minimalistic, it's musky, it's powdery, it's dry, woody, and ambery as well, featuring ambroxan and a major dosage of ambroxan here with musk, amber, aromatic spices, woods, lemon zest. Very intense if you're going for a, a screamer for the winter months, but you want something minimalistic, definitely try Après l'Amour, number four Après l'Amour from Co Thomas Cosmala. All right, moving on to number 19, we're going to a house called Art Olfato. This is Oud Cassian, this one right here. So this one to me uh, has similarities to some other fragrances. First, it reminds me of a little bit of Tom Ford's Oud Wood, but this is a lot smokier. Uh, this is, uh, dark and kind of uh, smoky but also very oody and also woody like there's major amounts of wood in this particular fragrance there's leathery touches and of course smoked woods and a bit of amber ambergris so for a little animalic touch so it's cardamom saffron woods ambergris vetiver tonka oud vanilla sandalwood very smoky very intense really loud long lasting art olfato oud cassian do you guys know that one uh, do let me know, or put a comment down so I can find out. Moving on to the house of, and I forgot to grab the fragrance here, it's Atelier de Orange's Rien Intense Incense. Uh, I'll flash a photo, obviously. So this is a very animalic fragrance with lots of incense smoke. It's also kind of powerhouse-ish and it reminds me of kind of fragrances from the 80s. A combination of very leathery men's fragrances with like incense smoke. It's got amber, it's got smoky aldehydic touches, it's got leather with incense uh, leather, of course. There's oak moss, there's uh, aldehydes. So there's a contrast in this particular fragrance that I really, really like, but in the end, it's a very dark and heavy weight fragrance. Definitely a screamer, very, very intense, very long lasting. The aldehydes kind of makes it an opposite for all the dense, dry, leathery, woody, smoky kind of notes, if that makes sense. Aldehydes are very uh, fizzy, uh, sparkly, and they add lift to uh, fragrances, but then everything else in this fragrance is very dark and dense, so they're heavy. So we've got this kind of like a balancing act happening with this particular fragrance. In the end, the dark, intense, heavy notes wins. But either way, Etat Libre de Orange Rien Intense Incense at number 18. So up next at number 17, it's Amarud's Sunset Oud. So in this video, I tried to compile fragrances that are extrait de parfum fragrances, so higher concentration, and also very, very intense, like powerhouse is the right word, although that's a style of, not style of fragrance, but I used to call those fragrances from the 80s powerhouses. This is definitely a powerhouse. It's a very long lasting oud fragrance with leather. It also has amber, myrrh, vetiver, lavender, tobacco flower, and rosemary. So the combination is very, very aromatic. It's got earthy notes. It's got tobacco-ish touches, but more floral in this case, and lots of resinous and ambery touches as well. This one also kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, oud wood from Tom Ford, but it's definitely a different take because 
because the oud wood has that cardamom. This one's missing the cardamom, so it doesn't have that kind of um, pungent uh, touch that the uh, cardamom has. So this one definitely goes into a different direction. Really dense, heavy fragrance, but it doesn't have a lot of fresh notes, if that makes sense. So it's a really big, uh, bad screamer. Sunset Oud from Amarud at number 17. Up next, going to the house of Amouage, it's Interlude 53. A lot of these are dark notes, and typically I'm a fan of sweet notes, ambers, vanillas, and things like that. So we'll get to some of those fragrances in our journey through this list. But this is kind of like a really intense but very luxury take on the original Interlude 53. I always felt like something happened to Interlude Man. It kind of must have gotten for reformulated because I used to feature it a lot in like Beast Mode fragrance videos. But later on I realized that it's not as intense as other fragrances that I've encountered. But this particular version is now back to uh, sort of in that original form. It's very smoky, it's very uh, spicy, but also has the oregano note in here. It's kind of a unique breath of fresh air kind of a note, like you wouldn't expect oregano that would come into a fragrance like this, so it contrasts beautifully. But it does have a Poppinax, oregano, leather, incense, agarwood smoke, amber, cistus labdanum, pimento berry. In the end, it's a very dark, smoky amber fragrance, but then it got, it's got that oregano to add a contrast. Interlude 53 at number 16. Uh, next, going to the House of Fragrance Dubois, this is Parisian, this one right here. So this is kind of sort of like a rose oud combo fragrance, but very spicy and earthy as well with ambery touches in the dry down. I would say this could be sort of like a distant relative of something like Portrait of a Lady, but it's different. Uh, very, very intense, very long lasting. And this particular fragrance garners me compliments as well, which is kind of cool because once it kind of hits your body and stays there for a while, mixes with your own body chemistry and things like that, whatever you're projecting off of you attracts people to ask you what you're wearing. So it has oud, incense, cardamom, rose, oak moss, and labdanum. And I feel like cardamom definitely adds a brightness here to this fragrance because once again, we've got dark notes and ambery notes in here and earthy notes as well, like oak moss. And the rose also brightens things up for sure. So it's Parisian from the house of Fragrance Dubois at number 15. All right, up next, going to the house of Lorenzo Pazzalia. This is Carbonara. Have you guys explored this particular house yet? All the fragrances in this house are Excrete de Parfum. A lot of them are beast mode, very intense fragrances. And Carbonara happens to be my favorite fragrance in this collection. I happen to love Spaghetti Carbonara, one of my favorite spaghettis. But I also really love this one because for Spaghetti Carbonara has a lot of black pepper that's used in the you know recipe. And I feel like this is definitely an amber with a lot of black pepper. So if you like that black peppery touch, contrasted with kind of the sweet, ambery, vanillic touches in the amber fragrance, definitely check this one out. But it's not just those notes. You've got amber, vanilla, sandalwood here, black pepper, pink pepper, coconut, and Devana. Devana adds a little bit of a green aromatic touch in this particular fragrance. Really a wonderful fragrance. It's an amber once again, but quite delicious and definitely like that kind of contrast of the not only the black pepper here But the pink pepper as well with the ambery touches So this is Carbonara from the house of Lorenzo Pazzalia moving on to the house of uh, Mancera It's red tobacco this one right here This is a beast total beast and if you haven't noticed my list has kind of changed around It's depending on what fragrances I'm feeling more than others red tobacco used to be really high now It's kind of slipping down uh, but still it really enjoy its intensity, its uh, loudness, really, really big fragrance, really long-lasting, probably most intense, one of the most intense Mancera fragrances. It's a tobacco fragrance in the end. It's tobacco with vanilla, cinnamon, oud, patchouli, saffron, incense, nutmeg, amber, and apple. So it's got this kind of a holiday-ish vibe, but this is definitely not necessarily like you're in the holidays. Maybe you're out and about and you've got this kind of holiday, <laughs> kind of a holiday touch in your mind or something because it's a bit rough. Uh, you got and enjoy that kind of roughness with this fragrance. The tobacco is very, very ashy and dirty. A bit animalic as well. So Mancera Red Tobacco at number 13. Uh, up next, going to the house of Narcotica. This is Dolce de Diablo, this one right here. Very interesting fragrance. This fragrance, I gotta be caution cautioning you, if you ever end up getting it, don't spray it close to your mouth. Absolutely not. Because the way it sprays, it's just like overwhelming, like literally overwhelms you. I've had family members try this and they've been overwhelmed because you know, my family loves perfumes and they're always curious to smell something new. And this one really does overwhelm. And I just sprayed it on again before and I love the way it smells. It's a unique smell. 
well. It's this combination of boozy notes with chocolate and dried fruits and apricots and things like that. Quite delicious. This probably would have ended up on my dried fruity fragrances, but I was specifically looking for that video of just dried fruits, not singling out one note. But either way, cognac, cacao, sandalwood, dried apricot, Madagascar vanilla, rum apricot, patchouli. Very fruity, apricotty for sure, and very, very boozy. The chocolate kind of throws in a very interesting combo here, and of course woody. Really, really intense. Definitely be careful, as I said, spraying it close to your mouth, because it's going to go in there if you don't uh, watch out. So Dolce Diablo by Narcotica. Really super uh, screamer for me. It's a definitely a big, big fragrance. So up next, going to the house of Uniki Luxury. It's Crush On Me. Once again, we've got kind of a gourmand fragrance here, but this time it's contrasted with a very delicious, almost green, earthy patchouli. This is not getting to be a chocolate cakey patchouli. It's more of the green variety and not necessarily, as I said, going into that direction of chocolate cakey. For me, the patchouli in this kind of reminds me of the patchouli in uh, uh, Diptyque's um, Tempo. But again, this is a completely different fragrance in comparison to that, where that one's more so about patchouli. Here, we've got caramel with the patchouli. So you've got that patchouli, the greenness from uh, Tempo, with the patchouli here, caramel, ginger, lime, amber, saffron, iris, musk, rose, woods, and mango magnolia. Very, very long lasting, so it's a screamer. It's really, really intense, big projection, major sillage with this one, so crush on me. Uh, perfect uh, winter screamer. Next, going to the house of Marc Antoine Barois. This is uh, B683 X-Ray, uh, really highly concentrated version of B683, but I also feel like this B683 X-Ray is similar to the not only the B683 fragrance, but also Ganymede, if that makes sense. So if you like both of those fragrances, you kind of get both of them in this particular fragrance. At least I do, but I also feel like B683 is definitely the, the, the main fragrance, and Ganymede is kind of like an offspring of B683, at least to me it is. That's why I'm getting kind of a combination of both here. Really super long-lasting with oud, saffron, violet leaf, green apple, sandalwood, patchouli, pink pepper, cumin, and vanilla. That cumin is magic in this. Really, really love it in here. Anyway, Marc Antoine Barrois B683 X-Ray is at number 10. Next, going to the house of Electimus London, it's Octavian. This, to me, is like Portrait of a Lady went and got coupled with The Night, both from Frederick Mall and this particular fragrance was born. It's super intense, a bit animalic, with oud, taif rose, attar of roses, saffron, pink pepper, olibanum amber. It's ambery for sure. It's leathery, of course. Lots of rose in this, and a funky oud, but really love it. Really, really intense. It's a screamer. Octavium by the House of Electimus London at number nine. Up next at number eight, going to the House of uh, Maison Crevelli. It's patchouli magnetic, this one right here. Do you guys know this fragrance? I don't think this fragrance has been well received, but for me, I much prefer it over the the hibiscus one. This fragrance to me smells so great on me, plus I get compliments with it. It's just funny that way. But it is patchouli in the end. It's a patchouli fragrance, but super, super intense. Really, really overwhelming. With a gardenia, and then also I think there's frangipani here, along with sandalwood and benzoin, so eventually it does have an ambery, woody base. But for me, there's a milky touch in this created by the white flowers. It's tropical, it's humid, it's hot, it's earthy, it's woody, and very, very long-lasting. So it's patchouli magnetic from the house of Maison Crevelli. At number seven, going to the house of Frederick Mall. I'm not featuring Portrait of a Lady today. I'm going with uh, Musk Ravageur. I kind of feel like I've featured Portrait of a Lady many times, and I have a few fragrances here that remind me of it. But I haven't spoken a lot about Musk Ravageur lately, and I really, really love this fragrance. It's really super intense. It's a gourmand musk, and this is probably the best fragrance Maurice Roussel has created for Frederick Mall out of the other three, which I didn't really care for uncut gems, especially for the price tag. But Musk Ravageur is super amazing. Really beautiful, delicious, musky gourmand fragrance with vanilla, musk, cinnamon, lavender, sandalwood, amber, and patchouli. It does have an holiday-ish vibe to me. That cinnamon and the kind of um, sticky sweetness in this particular fragrance does have a holiday-ish vibe, which I really, really like. And it's a perfect winter fragrance. Musk Ravageur 
from Frederick Mall at number seven. Next at number six, going to the house of Maitre Parfume at Gantier. It's Ombre Perso, this one right here. This is one of the best, best ambers out there. It's balsamic, it's resinous, it's spicy, it's aromatic, it's vanillic, and really, really intense and overwhelming and very, very long lasting. I really like it. It's got labdanum, it's got amber, it's got vanilla, plus it has lavender and it also has tolu balsam. So we've got a resinous balsamic experience here, a touch, and really a delicious amber one of the best ambers out there. It's Ombre Perso from the house of Maitre Parfum at Gantier. Uh, up next is another one that I have uh, changed up from this brand. This is another brand actually. Uh, a lot of you were, not a lot of you, some of you were complaining that I, I feature Baccarat Rouge 540 x too much in this uh, in my videos. So we're doing a little change up. We're going with a Another fragrance from this house, it's Oud Satin Mood, and uh, it's a perfect um, fragrance. It's a winter screamer for me, and it's really, really super intense with the rose, the violet, the oud, the vanilla, amber, and ben benzoin. For me, this is kind of like a makeup-y touch, but it's also very gourmandy. That violet note kind of adds this kind of violet and rose together, creates for like a little bit of a makeup-y touch, but it's in the end, it's very, very syrupy sweet, a bit sticky from the vanilla. There's definitely lots of amber here along with the benzoin. Of course, it's oud, but the oud is I think more of a backseat player for me. It's it's oody, but for me it's more about the rose violet and of course the vanilla amber and benzoin. Delicious fragrance, really long lasting. It's oud satin mood. I still haven't tried the X-ray version of that. Is it much better than the uh, EDP? Do let me know. Put a comment down so I can find out. Up next at number four, it's Zerjoff's Richwood. Man, this is great. Yeah, it does kind of remind me a little bit of um, Coromandel from Chanel, I'm drawing a blank with the name. Coromandel is one of my all-time favorite fragrances and Richwood is super delicious as well. What I like about this one, in comparison to Coromandel, this one gets a little more medicinal. It has a very medicinal touch. Something in the notes in here just creates for an, an uh, you know, kind of like a medicine, like a medicine cabinet or medicine box kind of a smell, along with all the other notes. It's very creamy. It does have that kind of that white chocolatey touch that Coromandel has, which is created from benzoin, but this is all about patchouli, sandalwood, vanilla, rose, musk, geranium, and cassis. And I feel like it's the sandalwood and patchouli combo together that creates this kind of a light medicinal touch but I love it. It's super intense and it smells fantastic. Richwood from the house of Zerzhov at number four. And you're probably getting really tired of me featuring this fragrance here. It is a little animalic, but it's Tiziana Terenzi's Ursa. I love that about this particular fragrance. It is really delicious. It does remind me of Killian's uh, Straight to Heaven, but it's more animalic. And you know, the animalic stuff does disappear. It goes away and then you're left with, you know, something more intense version of uh, Straight to Heaven uh, or the extreme version of Straight to Heaven. But it's leather, dried fruits, patchouli, rum, elemi, resin, tobacco. Great scent. I always feature this one because I love the way it smells. Straight to Heaven was my very first fragrance purchase from Killian back in 2012. Uh, and I've been a fan of that style, but it is a weak fragrance and I really love Ursa. One last thing I should also mention, this does feature dried fruits. I just did a video on dried fruity fragrances. You should pl please go catch that video. Anyway, Ursa at number three. Up next at number two, it's Javoy's Psychedelic. For sure, this has got to be here. And I'm feeling patchouli a lot lately. Really love the way patchouli smells, and this is one of the long-lasting ones. Really intense, big cloud, massive projection, you know, great sillage. You will get the attention of other people if you like that sort of thing, and they like the idea of patchouli. But this is that chocolate cakey patchouli that I really, really am obsessed with. It's patchouli with amber, vanilla musk, labdanum, geranium, and rose. Delicious stuff. Psychedelic at number two. And my number one favorite uh, winter screamer is going to be Thomas DeMonaco's Raw Gold. I've been obsessed ever since I discovered this. It's honeyed, totally honeyed. You might not like honeyed fragrances. Definitely this is honeyed. It also has a bit of an old school vibe, I think. I, I definitely think it does. And that's what I like about this one. It's super sticky with ambery touches. It's got the opopanax in here with patchouli. There's honey, there's suede, tonka beans. There's a bit of a barnyardy animalic thing happening in here as well. But it's like taking all these different styles and marrying it together for one beautiful concoction. Really fantastic smell, very long lasting 
watching. Love it. Rogold from the house of Thomas DeMonaco ends the list today. That's at number one. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts on these fragrances. Are you into these fragrances? Do you have a favorite uh, that you are going to be wearing that's very, really, really long lasting and intense? Do let me know. Put a comment down. Perhaps it's a winter screamer like these are for me. Do let me know if there are other fragrances I should check out. But either way, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. All right, you're probably wondering what happened to Nishane. I left it as a bonus fragrance because I'm going to do the layering duo once again. Nishane's Hachiva with 100 Silent Ways, uber intense, definitely a winter screamer. It also has a kind of a warm touch contrast with a fresh touch and it becomes a nuclear fragrance. It's super sexy as well. The combination is super sexy. It smells fantastic. He had Hachivat with its pineapple, the oak moss, patchouli, and grapefruit, along with 100 Silent Ways, you know, jasmine and gardenia, and all of those kind of like beautiful white floral notes contrasted with woods and things like that. Super delicious fragrance combination, layering duo. If you have those, try it. You're gonna love it. And you'll probably get compliments as well. Uh, I can't guarantee. But the last bonus fragrance I'm going to talk to you about, I left it off the list, it's uh, Boaz Mysterio, this one right here. Yeah, it's a great scent, really super intense, it's, um, it, like, it's got spices with resins, green notes like bay laurel, has kind of a spiciness, and of course leathery touches as well. And you can't forget the cumin in this, but it is just a great, great fragrance and a wonderful offering from Guerlain. So this is Boaz Mysterio from uh, the House of Guerlain, and that's the second and last bonus fragrance for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.